Hello, Psychedelic Renaissance. It is your favorite pain in the ass, Tom Hatzis, the Psychedelic Witch, here with another installment of There Are No Mushrooms in Christian Art, even though I wish there were, because I find the idea to be very, very cool and intriguing. You know the hypothesis. There are some out there who believe that medieval artists secretly, and sometimes not so secretly, painted mushrooms in their frescoes, their mosaics, their illuminated manuscripts. So much so that advocates of this holy mushroom hypothesis even have a name for this kind of foliage, which they call the mushroom tree. In this video, we're going to explore the true origins of these so-called mushroom trees. Those who point to this hypothesis will claim that these supposed mushroom trees appear all over the medieval Christian artistic landscape. They will point to places like St. Bernard's Door of Salvation, or the Transfiguration of Jesus seen as found in the Church of St. Michael. Let's put these images aside for the moment, and go back into ancient history to determine if a mushroom is actually the best place to start our investigation. Indeed, it seems as if there is another symbol used throughout history that might provide a better source for the origin of these interesting-looking trees. And that origin is the Assyrian Parasol of Victory. Parasols of Victory and parasols in general are not very common today, but they were very well known in the ancient and medieval world. They were a way to show power, prestige, or that you just kick somebody's ass. Now take a moment and notice in these images the nub at the top of the parasols and the tassels at the bottom or the lines that would indicate where tassels would be. They're going to be very important for us later. From Assyria, the parasol of victory made its way onto Herodian coinage, as we see here, which makes a lot of sense because the Herodians were a bunch of power-hungry douchebags. From there, it made its way into Rome, and then even after the fall of the Western Empire, the parasol of victory still made its way as a symbol into Christian Europe, as we see here with this 1247 rendition of Constantine and St. Sylvester. In fact, we can actually pinpoint the very moment when the parasol of victory entered Christian art as a symbol of Christ's power and reign over all. It happens right here with the canonization of St. Henry II, as it appears in the Ragensburg Sacramentary, an illuminated manuscript dating to the late 10th century. You'll have noticed that as Jesus crowns St. Henry II uh, king of the Holy Roman Empire, to St. Henry's right, there's that angel handing him off the parasol of victory. And look up at the top there, there's a cross on, on the summit of the nub. That nub will now serve to show Christ's power and domination overall. And in fact, we will be able to use that nub along with the tassels to show the remnants of the parasol as later artists merged this iconic symbol into their trees. Let's go back to those earlier scenes we were looking at, specifically Bernouard's Door of Salvation. Only this time, it should be very easy to see the underlying parasol theme in these supposed mushroom trees. See the nub is still at the top? And look, it even has tassels on the middle and the bottom of it. When we go back over to St. Michael's Church with the Transfiguration of Jesus scene, we notice that the tassels have evolved into leaves, and the nub at the top remains. Even more interesting is that these parasol trees turn up in another manuscript dating to the 1490s. Now, I've been unable to get my hands on this manuscript, but another fellow named C.F. Gordon Cummings was able to in the late 1800s, and in his own work reproduce some of the interesting looking trees he saw, which he dubs the tree-shaped umbrella, the very kind of tree a holy mushroom advocate would confuse for the Amanita muscaria mushroom. I mean, look, it even has the spots at the top. Another really interesting place that the Parasol of Victory shows up in Christian art is in the famous Canterbury Psalter. These plants are often confused for mushrooms, but look at this one to God's right-hand side. I mean, you could still see the nub at the top and the tassels. And this red one here that is always confused for a nominated muscaria mushroom, well, just look inside. You can see that those aren't really mushrooms. They're parasols. They still have the nub at the top and the tassels at the bottom. We are looking at nothing more than a medieval artistic trend that started in the late 10th century and was fully formed by the 13th when it became just artistically fashionable to depict trees in this parasol shape. 
And how do we know this was an artistic trend and not some secret mushroom cover-up? Well, because these same parasol trees appear in secular and non-devotional works. In another video, I unpacked this Folio 27V from Emmaus Boldy in 602. And now I should say, there was a time in my life when I believed this was an Amanita muscaria mushroom, but we can see that it still has the parasol top, a little bit of the tassels hanging off the sides there, and of course, the nub at the summit. There's also, from this same manuscript, Emmaus Boldio 6, Boldian 602, sorry, uh, Folio 14R. Here, we can very clearly see the parasol top and the evolution of the tassels into leaves. So this, I contend, is the true origin of the so-called mushroom trees. They are really parasol trees. And, unlike the holy mushroom hypothesis and accompanying art claim for which there is no corroborating evidence anywhere in history, we have tons of corroborating evidence for the parasol as both a symbol of power and its depictions as a symbol of power in both ancient and medieval art. Further, I hope I've demonstrated that from the 10th to 13th centuries, we could actually see the remnants of the parasol being merged into the trees by looking at the nubs and the tassels that appear in both the Christian and secular works of art. Well, that's all I have for you this time. I thank you all so much for stopping by. I'm hoping this video will spark a conversation. And until that day, I'm Tom Hatzis, your psychedelic witch, saying peace. Oh, <laughs> peace.